Well, I am glad you're in a great mood because we today we celebrate one of our most cherished holidays in this country. Today is 7-Eleven, also known as Free Slurpee Day. <laughs> Although, you know, any day can be free Slurpee Day if you drink them fast enough. <laughs> People love this holiday. They've been doing this for 17 years now. And it's much more popular than 7-Eleven's other big promotional holiday, free tiny wrinkled hot dog that's been sitting out since the Bush administration <laughs> day. I believe that's October 8th. But today is the day. Today's the day you can spend hours in line waiting in line for a Slurpee for free. Or you can pay a dollar any other day and get one in, like, <laughs> two seconds. But... Nothing against Slurpees. As a general rule, I don't drink anything that has the word pee in it. It's just me. <laughs> we have a big-time show to celebrate today. The director of The Lion King and friend of Spider-Man, John Favreau, is here with us. <laughs> and from the World Cup-winning USA soccer team, two of the most popular Americans in America are here, Alex Morgan and Megan Rapino. <laughs> Music from Taylor Bennett. You know, the president hasn't extended an invitation yet to the women's soccer team to visit the White House, but today he rolled out the orange carpet for a hangout with all his favorite wing nuts. He, he held what he called a social media summit at the White House today. So he invited a group of people that included conspiracy theorists, internet trolls, QAnon followers, all the worst people, people who like their own posts, all the worst people on the... <laughs> Internet. There haven't been this many trolls in one room since the table read for Lord of the Rings. And <laughs> Trump notably did not invite Facebook or Twitter to the summit because he claims they're biased against him, even though they're a big reason why he got elected. Without Twitter, Trump would be a crazy old man yelling at busboys at Mar-a-Lago right now. He would... <laughs> but he doesn't trust them because with all that's going on in the world, what the president seems most concerned about is how many likes he gets on Twitter. When I put out something, a good one, that people like, <laughs> right, a good tweet, it goes up. It used to go up, it would say 7,000, 7,008, 7,017, 7,024, 7,032, 7,044, right? Now it goes 7,000, 7,008, 6,998, then they go, 7,009, 6,074. I said, what's going on? No, it never did that before. It goes up, and then they take it down, then it goes up. I'd never had that. Does, does anyone know what I'm talking about with this? No, no, not, no. Now, have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in? Because it sounds... And the Trumpiest thing is, he... He claims Twitter's got this conspiracy against him. So what does he do? Today, he tweets more than 20 times. <laughs> He's uh, a big subject today at the White House Social Media Summit will be the tremendous dishonesty, bias, discrimination, and suppression practiced by certain companies. We will not let them get away with it much longer. They will all be endorsing me at some point, one way or the other. Could you imagine having sleepy Joe Biden or Alfred E. Newman or a very nervous and skinny version of Pocahontas as your president <laughs> rather than what you have now, so great looking and smart, a true stable genius? <laughs> Sounds like someone's working on his Tinder profile to me. <laughs> but as far as the election goes, Republicans in Congress met with administration officials and they now say they're confident that the election in 2020 will be safe and secure from foreign interference. Senator Lindsey Graham said he was very impressed by the administration's plan for election security. And you know what? If the people with the most to gain from election tampering say it's not a concern, well, that's good enough for me. <laughs> These Republicans in Congress are basically the family that puts the ADT sticker on the window of their house without getting the alarm installed. They're like, you know what? The Stranger Things kids already took care of the Russians. If you watch the new season, you know, so it's fine. You, the last time Trump and Putin were together, they were giggling and whispering in each other's ears. I don't think that's over. Eight U.S. intelligence agencies said Russia interfered in our election. That Republicans in Congress know that we need legislation to protect against that, but they can't say it because Daddy Donald takes it as an insult. He doesn't like to hear about Russia interfering because it insinuates he didn't win the election on his own. So what they're doing is nothing. They will do nothing. And it will happen all over again. Meanwhile, Vice President Pence was here in California last night. He didn't come to visit. He's at Vandenberg Air Force Base talking about, well, his favorite subject. 
President Trump made it clear the time has come to establish the sixth branch of our armed forces, and soon the United States Space Force will be a reality. Hey, I think this is the 50th time he's announced the Space Force. You know you have to actually do something too, right? You won't just, the Space Force won't just appear. You can't just say Space Force over and over again. It's not Beetlejuice, it doesn't just... <laughs> this is something the Vice President will like. There's a guy named Robert Foster. He's running for governor in Mississippi. He's in the news today because he refused to do an interview with a female reporter unless they were accompanied by a male colleague. That's called pulling a pence, okay? <laughs> The reporter wanted to shadow the candidate on the campaign trail, which would have involved her riding alone with him in his truck, but he was not okay with that. He was on CNN today uh, with the reporter where he attempted to explain this. I didn't want to end up in a situation where me and Ms. Campbell were, the, were alone for an extended period of time throughout that 15 to 16 hour day. And so out of precaution, uh, I wanted to have uh, her bring someone with her, a uh, male colleague, and it's, it's the other thing that I think is important to point out is that this is my truck, and in my truck, we go by my rules. Okay. And right, right, uh, that's, that's, that's my rule. That's right. In, his, in my truck, we go by my rules. <laughs> and if that truck's a-rockin', don't come a-knockin'. Because that's... <laughs> what a weirdo. I mean, that's weird. And it got weirder. Look at, like, um, our current Governor Bryant's staff. You know, one of his top attorneys, one of his top policy directors, those are all women. How are you going to do that if you can't be alone with a woman? Uh, it's very simple. You always can have the uh, door open and have people right in the room next door. Uh, but this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about a 15 to 16 hour vehicle ride in my truck. And yeah, that's right. And that's his truck. <laughs> and they go by his rules in his truck. I don't know about you, but I don't think anyone who needs a chaperone to sit next to a woman should be the governor of a state. But he says he made a vow with his wife and that neither of them would ever be alone with a member of the opposite sex. And he sticks to that. Sometimes it takes him an hour to be able to get on an elevator. It's really difficult, but... <laughs> and the more he tried to explain it, the more ridiculous his argument got. Representative, what do you think would happen if you were alone in a room with Larison? She seems to be a, a professional reporter who asks questions. What do you think happens? Uh, nothing, and that's what I just stated. You can have the door open and have people in the room next door, and so that there's nothing there, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about riding a my truck for a 15 to 15 hour day. What happens in your truck that's different than a room with an open door? It's just the perception, and that's a rule that I've always had and I've always followed. It's a very professional rule that many other people, including Billy Graham and Governor Mike Pence, have followed. That's right, and if it's good enough for a man who calls his wife mother, it's good enough for him. <laughs> that's, I think that's what you want in the governor, right? Someone who isn't allowed to, to meet with half the population of your state. By the way, this is Robert Foster. This is, you can see why women lose control around him. <laughs> well, one look at that crooked bull cut, and I dare you not to fall in love with him. The good news for Foster and other men like him who have a hard time resisting the temptations of the flesh is that help is on the way. Are you a man with conservative values who can't trust himself around mouth-watering female women? Going down? I'll take the next one. I'd love to work with women, but on the other hand, what if penis? What if penis indeed? Now there's help. Wow! Now no one can force me to commit adultery. The Chastity He Belt. With Chastity He Belt, you can now enjoy a normal, healthy working relationship with human women. Go out on the town. Command the Space Force. Even run for office. Quick word. Ooh. Oh. You bet. Chastity He Belt. My truck. My rules. Available at Walgreens. Oh, 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 they, oh, oh, oh. If you like that video, click subscribe and we'll be together until one of us dies.